The unique kind of glorious burden of this institution and other multilateral development organizations and international financial institutions, as well as non-government organizations that are tasked with trying to facilitate or enable reform processes, as well as governments themselves, are really finding, trying to find ways to make systems and institutions work. And Winston uh, is the one who taught me about the, you know, the New Haven School of Jurisprudence, Policy Sciences, uh, which is founded by Harold Laswell, who's a founding member of the Academy, the World Academy. The president? The, the president, president, yes. One of the early principles. And, and, and the, this idea of this kind of, this, this cascade between the social process, the power process, and the constitutive process is something which resonated with me immediately even when I was a wet behind the ears kid in, in Winston's class. And it's because it makes sense. And it's exactly, I think, as Gary has just very eloquently described, which is that people pursue values and needs by accruing power and resources to constitute institutions in order to prescribe rules. That's it. And in so doing, I mean, that in, in, at, at multiple levels, at scale, at either at scale, if you're talking about the federal system like this country, if you're talking about uh, a, 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 um, uh, an international uh, system like the European Union or, or, or like a multilateral development bank where you have different sovereign entities coming together to try to find ways uh, uh, to come to some uh, concurrence or agreement about large-scale reforms which would benefit uh, human dignity uh, writ large, or all the way down to, to, to little micro levels. Because as Rick Gary has also mentioned, and Winston certainly mentioned this morning, is that the concept of law is, is a stratified concept, and that's what's so fascinating about it. Um, this idea of micro law is something which is also it's very interesting, and it's also wildly intuitive. Um, Mike Riesman, uh, a member of this uh, academy, yes, uh, 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 wrote a really interesting uh, book not so many years ago called Law and Brief Encounters. And uh, the premise of the book is also simple, is that, is that you have codified law, like constitutions and the UN Charter and the Charter of this institutions, etc., and you also have uncodified informal law that, that binds us together, like waiting in line at a bus stop. That's an institution, that's, that is a micro-legal institution. Um, and that is a law and brief encounters between us. Like, how do you say hello? Under what circumstances? In what context? And in 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 uh, and to think of law that way. And Winston has written extensively on this. Uh, and you you know on uh, law as a process of communication as well. Riesman also has written about international law as a process of communication. So there are many ways to think about the concept of law um, above and beyond very kind of rigid. Uh, formulaic, uh, uh, codified uh, rules and regulations. Um, and that's what makes it such an interesting, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> professional uh, 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 pursuit. Um, uh, so that's why I'm a lawyer. But I mean, um, so, so, so to, to think about law as this reflection of public consciousness or the public conscience, I think, I think that's, that's right. I think that's a very elegant way to describe it. Um, and to bring it into this organization, um, it, it, it's it's a it, it, it's it's um, this organization is 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 fundamentally an economic organization, um, and so to talk about law, um, it, it's I can tell you about let's talk about what the organization does and who comprises it. So the vast majority of people in this building are economists. Um, there are lots of lawyers also, and they're not just practicing lawyers in our legal department kind of pushing paper, but there are also people who are practitioners, um, development practitioners, who are working uh, with our client countries in order to affect or, or support uh, legal reforms, policy reforms, uh, build capacity, strengthen institutions in order to try to achieve or enable our clients to achieve an improved form of what we call governance. Um, we've heard this morning, I think, an extremely comprehensive and very uh, valuable description of what governance means, what counts as governance. Um, and, and the reason we're talking about these things is, I guess from this institution's perspective, as you've heard this morning, law or rule of law is a component of effective governance. If governance is the kind of umbrella phenomenon which uh, comprises a series of different interrelated, interconnected uh, uh, criteria, Rule of law is one of those criteria, and for lack of a better um, descriptor, and it's certainly this is not, this is one conception of it. Um, I would 
but it, it's a useful kind of snapshot about how the organization thinks of it. Number one, as Gary mentioned, uh, the World Bank uh, published a World Development Report in 2015 on uh, essentially unpacking the concept of governance and de for development. Um, it's a very thick, very large document. Uh, the World Development Report is our flagship report we publish one every year. Um, an easier way to think about it, or an easier, um, let's say, snapshot of what counts as good governance for this institution is something that was developed in 1996, uh, by, co-developed by one of um, uh, the originators of the definition of good governance, at least from the bank that you had cited this morning, <coughs> or afternoon, uh, who was Art Cray, and uh, Danny Kaufman. Uh, so Danny Kaufman is now the World Resource uh, Center, World Resource uh, <laughs> Institute, exactly. Danny hired me. That's how I came to this organization um, back in 2005. And um, Danny was an interesting, it is a fascinating person. Um, Art Cray still works here in our health, public health uh, department. And together they and another colleague of mine named Massimo Mastruzzi pulled together something called the World Governance Indicators. So it is, uh, it's, it's governance through the prism of how you can measure it, which was and remains a sticky issue. But it was the first effort by this institution to try to look at a series of, of, of uh, let's say, um, sometimes nebulous, sometimes very difficult to understand concepts and actually superimpose an economic model on top of it and actually see if you can track progress from year to year. And to date, I, I think it's one of the more um, uh, kind of elegant representations of how governance can be a development concept in the sense that you can track it and try to improve it. It's not perfect, um, but I think it's very interesting. And under their conception of governance, it had, it had six kind of criteria. Um, it's uh, voice and accountability, uh, political stability, uh, government uh, regulations, sorry, regulatory quality, uh, government effectiveness, rule of law was one, was one component of it, um, and then control of corruption. And under, the, under that kind of rubric, uh, they were able to identify essentially a series of different indicators that were then um, uh, you know, using data that the World Bank and other institutions either, either already collected or were, or were attempting to collect in order to be able to try to discern whether or not um, uh, countries are uh, doing well in these areas or not well. And then generating an index of countries and actually mapping them against each other so that you can see where countries were relative to each other. Um, and there was a reason for that, and it's the way, it's the reason why we do other indices as well, like uh, the Doing Business Report, if you're familiar with that one, that's another World Bank index where uh, bank economists and statisticians gather data about the quality and ease of doing business of I mean, private sector uh, um, uh, performance across our client countries, and we rank countries against each other relative to their ability to do business, how, how fast it takes uh, to register a company, how easy it is um, uh, to get uh, health insurance for your employees, et cetera, et cetera. So all the different kind of criteria. And it generates a, um, an interesting narrative for countries, and it also creates an impetus for countries to try to do better. Um, so when we're talking about the reason why I think the framing here is important, and this is why we're, this institution is careful not to conflate things like rule of law or law with governance, is because they think, because at least in my opinion, it's a, it's a, it's a tiered, um, a rule of law is an element of, of, of good governance. Um, and, and when we're thinking of of what that looks like in an operational context, in the context of a World Bank project or loan. Um, it is, um, it also is, again, it's, it's very, um, the reality of what uh, Gary had described and what Winston, I'm sure, had mentioned this morning, um, along that kind of spectrum of legal theory, uh, this, the subjectivity of law um, is, uh, you know, very much aligned to a, a, a theory of law called legal realism where uh, the judge is going to describe, it will, will, will rule on your case on the basis of what he had for breakfast that morning. And, um, uh, as, and the pendulum swings all the way in the other direction toward legal positivism, which is this very kind of scientific, rigid approach to law where precedent is everything and you can effectively unpack a case into its constituent parts or variables and then construct on the basis of precedent an equation which will generate the, uh, the necessary outcome. If so facto, uh, it's a scientific process. And there's a lot of wonderful fuzziness in the middle. 
Um, and so this institution doesn't quite get into different schools of thought with that respect. I think it's more it's more focused on on uh, on, on the effectiveness of the of the institutions that are that are making the decision processes itself. Um, and to reach back into the previous discussion just a little bit, um, we, the, the, uh, it seemed to me that the theme, the kind of unofficial theme of that discussion was context matters, culture matters. And so when you're talking to a large organization like this one, which is tasked with trying to find or, or identify good practice, and then replicate good practice or work hand in glove with our clients in order to try to effect reforms that reflect that good practice. Um, it, it's bumping up against uh, certain uh, challenges associated with culture, with context, with, uh, with uh, history, with uh, uh, subtext, uh, with language, uh, definitions, uh, with um, uh, you know, uh, undiagnosed biases, with uh, the prescriptive quality of what you're doing in the first place, and with the standpoint of the person coming in to have the conversation as well, and the extent to which we may or may not be superimposing our own uh, 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 biases or, or kind of pre-opinions uh, onto processes as well. So it is, a, it's a very dynamic process as well. And so to say that it is, you know, that, that, that you can have a kind of one uh, size fits all model is something which I think has been thoroughly debunked and this organization doesn't uh, do that. Um, but to, to reach into any kind of given governance program here, um, there are certain, there are using this kind of, again, unofficially this kind of the six, these six criteria and how you can um, uh, uh, provide support, meaningful support in each of those areas um, for a sum total approach with participation and social accountability, etc. There is this recognition, I think, that that um, that it is possible uh, to to strengthen governance. Uh, uh, performance in countries over time if they're done intelligently. Um, and that tension between the, the good practice principles and the effective, context sensitive, and kind of uh, hyper levels of, of, of attention to, to the, to the you know, myriad overlapping contextual triggers in, in, in where you happen to be working, uh, somewhere in there uh, is, 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 is how the institution functions, I think. Um, I'm not talking on behalf of the organization in this sense. This is just my 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 perspective on it. Um, but but it's it's heartening to see you know that that, that a lot of interesting progress has been done. And um, and so you know to come back to my comment my remarks this morning. I don't I, I won't talk for much longer. But um, when I said that the you know, the World Bank in general looks right now at procurement, uh, public financial management, and tax, uh, that's not. I, I don't think I meant to suggest that, was the, that, was, that we were delimited, or that that's, um, that's obviously part of the larger governance conversation. The organization has been growing um, over the last 30-ish uh, years to, 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 to expand its definition of governance, and, I, and it's frankly, it's, I think its definition, at least informally, of, our, of, of who counts as our clients. Um, to become much more involved in, in, in uh, uh, citizen engagement and, and public participation in governance processes and um, in pro or decision making and, and what that looks like in practice. Uh, and, I, you know, and, and that has meant um, much more engagement, exponentially more engagement we need with each passing year with uh, civil society organizations and media organizations and technologists the private sector and academia, and think tanks and religious organizations and youth groups, and, and, and more. Whereas if you were to come here 35 or 40 years ago the, and ask someone to define their client base, you would have gotten a different answer. And so, it's a, it, so, so, so we have a citizen engagement strategy now as an institution, which is, again, maybe not terribly impressive for, for the people in this room, but for this organization, it's saying something. Um, and, and, um, you know, and, and we've got, uh, again, under our larger kind of um, corpus of uh, policies and procedures that every World Bank official is affirmatively obliged to implement. Um, we have things on, like, guidance notes on multi-stakeholder coalition building and engagement above and beyond government counterparts in order to, to do these things. There's a requirement now for every single World Bank project to have a citizen engagement component. Every one of them. Um, and that component means 
uh, a rigorous analysis of the, of, of, the, of the communities and individuals to be affected by that project that you're standing up, and it ranges in size from a, you know massive, uh, you know, a, a half a billion dollar or a billion dollar infrastructure projects, all the way down to these very kind of much smaller community health programs, um, and uh, and and talking to every single one of those people. The people that are going to be affected by your program, by your project, through community engagement, through representative samples, through um, through uh, town halls, and and uh, working with um, uh, working with uh, counterparts in countries, and and um, and so 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 to be to be um, uh, uh, so I think there's room for optimism about 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 how governance is being taken seriously. Um, um, and from an operational perspective, I do think that I, I think I think that optimism is uh, is justified when you look at things like the sustainable development goals themselves. Um, and the the mere existence of the goals, I think, is something which which bears uh, a, a moment to pause and think about. Um, uh, they are uh, a very ambitious and extremely. Um, um, optimistic um, snapshot of a series of kind of mission critical goals for the entire human race uh, to achieve in a very short period of time effectively to save ourselves from ourselves. And um, that the international community came together to articulate them in the first place. Uh, that as much time, energy, and resources are being poured into the pursuit of these goals, um, to say nothing whatsoever, just tracking them, which is I'm on the interagency expert group, which is helping actually identify the indicators and to track these things. Yeah. And, and we are, and there is a real and meaningful uh, effort by large organizations like this, by governments around the world, um, in order to really chip away at, at some of the stickiest, most complex, uh, most uh, challenging problems that uh, the human race faces um, at the moment. Um, the hope is that we'll make more progress, that we're going to get there. Um, governance is embodied in SDG 16. So the fact, again, that the international community, for all of its uh, complexities and, and differences of opinion, uh, was able to harmonize on on uh, several dimensions of what good governance means, and where, as a as a, as a planet, we are all rowing in uh, more or less the same direction in an effort to try to achieve some meaningful inroads and achievements against these goals, and uh, on, 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 uh, within the next 12 years, I, I think in and of itself is is is, is a sign, is a good sign, and it, I think it's in, and, and I think it's also a sign that the definition of governance. Um, the um, benefits uh, it entails, good governance entails, um, and the importance of uh, the rule of law as a component of that process are increasingly achieving um, um, some, uh, are increasingly normative, uh, notwithstanding uh, the, 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 the culture question, the uh, uh, application questions, perspectives, um, and context. And so there is, I think, hope that um, that the tension between uh, subjectivity and conscience uh, and the public co the public conscience and this idea that good governance is something which can be pursued and possibly achieved um, is, um, is 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 happening. So, so thank you, thank you for the chance to talk. Thank you.